Hi everyone, it's Stacia. We are out here right now this morning uh, talking to a couple of residents that live right here, right along the airport property, uh, just in front of the ball fields. And we've introduced myself, Stacia from Warwick Watch, but they would like to just be referred to as the Warwick residents here. And they're sharing some feedback regarding just what's been happening with the drainage, what's been happening with the future plans for putting up a stockade fence, and just uh, different things that are the changes and the aggravations and the ideas that they've shared with RIAC and the city. And uh, of course, most of the time, no one really seems to want to listen to uh, public feedback, but we are, and we're gonna make it public. So w tell me about what you just were sharing about what happened when uh, we had that last heavy rainfall? When we had the last uh, heavy rainstorm, we had the retention, and what happened was it overflowed into the second retention. Uh, so there's the first retention there, right over there. There's the first retention area, and then here's the second retention. It kind of slopes down and comes up again where you have this wall of shrubs. So it came up over, over that shrub top, line. Okay. Over the shrubs, and what they did, they didn't have the shrubs there, and it just went right into my neighbor's shot, flooded his whole backyard, and my neighbor uh, next door as well. And you couldn't, they couldn't get anything. That I mean, the whole fence got ruined. Mm -hmm. Everything, all the dirt went right into their, right into their yard. It's just, it's just yeah. not working. They should have a huge fence uh -huh. on this wall where this. You think uh, it should be high? So I'm thinking it should be it, it dips, it dips down right here. And right. I know that they said that they want, they plan on building a six foot stockade fence, but that's coming on the downslope right over there. And you can see where the shrub line is, it's higher. When you come out here and you see this, it would make more sense that they would put the fence on the shrub line that's higher. Exactly. That would give you more protection. More privacy and, it would be and more hot. protection from the smell. Exactly. And I don't. I personally don't think six feet. I think it should be at least it's, ten well, feet. Well, I mean, foot. this used to be a residential area. Mm -hmm. Now it's. I mean, when it's a ball field, is it commercial? So from commercial, that you could put a ten foot stockade fence, a, a ten foot or a twelve foot fence barrier. So mm -hmm. I mean. Uh, with, with them building the land up so high, you could have a six foot fence, but when the people are looking in your yard, it's really a, a two foot fence. Sure. Because everybody's looking right in your yard and you know, there's no privacy. Especially if it's on that, if, if they put the fence on the lower slope. So the, uh, the thought is to put a six foot stockade fence right along this line here, but this is on a lower level. Mm -hmm. So here you have, this is where the fence line is. A lot of these fences actually were damaged by that last microburst storm, uh, we could walk down. Um, you could still see it from here. There's a lot of damage, but it does make more sense. Actually, the fence should be where the shrub line is. Yeah. Now, what happened was because of the overflow of water, you said that they put in more drainage. So they put another. They put a drain right here, and there's another one further down, from what I understand. Yes. Yeah. But there is no where this buffer zone area is right to the right over here. There's not another one located heading down in that direction closer to Airport Road. And then to the right is where yesterday I showed where uh, you had the construction area going onto Lakeshore and then to Warwick Pond. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get you. <laughs> and then this is another thing that we see. Um, the residents here said, look at these shrubs. Uh, so far we've counted, let's see. This one is dying. That one is dying. There's quite a few dying. There's about half of the shrubs that were planted here are dying. Here's another one here. And they keep going. Uh, from here I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They go all the way down. These were planted and it looks like half of them are dying, if not more. Don't know what happened, how much this cost. I don't know if they just didn't properly water them or what's killing them, but they're dying. So we'll have more feedback um, for you. And just keep in mind, everyone, that at one point in this area here, there were three to 400 maple trees. So at one point when these people first bought their homes 20, 30 years ago, there were streets here. You know, two, two, three streets. There were three to four hundred 
maple trees, big trees that were acting as a buffer zone and it was all cleared out. So now these residents here are just completely exposed. And I know that we saw comments yesterday, oh, you know, you bought your house, and, you know, you bought it by an airport, we'll expect that stuff to happen. No, um, no one expected that this was going to happen, that they would clear out this entire area, these people living over here. They had protection at one time. And all of these other people that used to live here, they were bought out by the airport. Why not just keep, they should have just bought out this entire street here. These, all of these homes here, these people, most of them wanted to be bought out. They were given no choice. And this is what they have now. And I'm gonna have you listen to one other thing that this gentleman shared with us about what the fumes are like early in the morning. I'm still recording. Could you please share what you said earlier about the fumes first thing in the morning? Yes, when okay. it's on a cool morning, the fumes are a lot. You stay close to the ground versus a warm day. You come here at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning and a lot of times you're putting your shirt over your mouth and nose in order to breathe and that's pretty bad. So the cold air keeps the fumes closer to the, the we, In ground. the winter time, mm -hmm. cold fall, like last Saturday, this past, whatever date, uh, yes. September, the children were showing up to play and you could smell the fumes and this was about 20 after 7 in the morning. 20 after 7, so when the air is cooler in the morning, the air is more stagnant, it keeps the fumes down on ground like level this, and you're saying they're, as they're it heavier. Up, sure. fumes are heavier I think, where when it's warm they, the air is lighter and it goes up I guess, I'm mm -hmm. not sure, but that's when we smell them. And you're saying at times you, it's just the smell is so strong you have to put your t-shirt over your Or go in the house, face, yes. Or go in the yes. house, yes. okay. Thank and you that's for that. in, a, in, my, in our yard with the gate closed. Okay, thank you for that feedback. We'll have more for the public because uh, this entire situation with what the residents are having to deal with and what's happening at Warwick Pond, uh, educated guests here, it's, it's all tied together. And I believe that with the proper investigative work, the proper testing, it'll all add up. But we're, we are going to share with you the frustrations of the public because you have people who are outspoken, who are concerned, who are disgusted, who are aggravated. When you have planners and leadership, they don't live over here. They don't have to deal with this every day. Most of these people who come out here, the, the people from the airport corporation and everyone involved, they come out here, they do their work and they leave. And they don't want to hear the frustrations that the public has, but you all need to hear it because it does affect people's quality of life. And potentially with what's going on at Warwick Pond, if it doesn't get better, it's devaluing the properties. The properties will become devalued if this problem is not addressed and if it's not fixed for this entire area. So that's why we do what we do because we care and the public needs to be heard because too often they're, they're shut down or we're shut down. So we're going to use social media to get the information out to the public.